Ich begrüße Sie ganz herzlich im Namen der Kommission für Geowissenschaften der Österreichischen Akademie der Wissenschaften. Mein Name ist Christian Köberl, bin der Vorsitzende dieser Kommission. Äh, schön, dass äh, so viele sich zuschalten können. Äh, ich habe ganz am Anfang zwei äh, Bitten bzw. Anmerkungen. Wenn Sie bitte, wenn Sie sich zuschalten, während des Vortrages alle stumm schalten. Es gibt nachher dann die Gelegenheit natürlich für Fragen. Und der zweite Punkt ist, wir zeichnen diese, diesen Vortrag hier auf, um ihn dann auch online zugänglich zu machen. Und äh, ich würde Sie halt bitten, dass Sie das äh, zustimmend zur Kenntnis nehmen, ähm, damit wir das auch vernünftig machen können. Gut, damit äh, ist eigentlich schon der administrative Teil erledigt. Ähm, ich äh, habe, wie gesagt, die Freude, heute äh, Ihnen vorzustellen äh, Mirutz Hagus Gidey. Er ist Professor für Geologie äh, an der Mekelle Universität in Äthiopien. Er ist äh, ein früherer Dissertant von uns hier an der Universität Wien hat er bei uns 2011 abgeschlossen äh, und äh, hatte damals ein sogenanntes ÖAD Nord-Süd-Stipendium. Die, diese Art von Stipendien gibt es leider nicht, die waren meiner Ansicht nach sehr erfolgreich. Äh, er hat äh, sehr viel an vulkanischen und tektonischen Strukturen und Entwicklungen, vor allem im Afar-Gebiet, äh, in Äthiopien gearbeitet hat über 50 Publikationen bereits in den verschiedensten wissenschaftlichen Zeitschriften und ist momentan auf Einladung und mit Unterstützung der Österreichischen Akademie der Wissenschaften, hier möchte ich ganz besonders die Abteilung für internationale Zusammenarbeit unter äh, Herrn Plunger äh, erwähnen und auch ein bisschen Unterstützung durch die Geowissenschaftliche Kommission hier als Gastwissenschaftler in Wien wo er eineinhalb Monate im Sommer verbringt, vermutlich noch immer etwas kühler als bei ihm zu Hause. Äh, damit höre ich auch schon auf. Äh, wie gesagt, es gibt am Anschluss an den Vortrag die Möglichkeit, Fragen zu stellen. Mir und ich teilen uns hier äh, einen Computer, einen Bildschirm. Er sitzt neben mir und wird jetzt herüberrutschen. So, and with all these German introductions, uh, I will now change to English. Uh, and welcome Mirots here, um, and uh, we'll just exchange our chairs here, our seats, uh, and I'll let him give his presentation approximately 40 minutes, and there are questions, uh, time for questions afterwards. So Mirots, just pick your chair and roll over here. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Christian, I think, for introducing me with this uh, very uh, special guest to say and event, the Academy of Science Austria. So it would have been good if the lecture would be in Germany, but uh, because of some limitations, we twisted it to English. So maybe our uh, presentation lecture would be in English. And uh, actually you saw on the screen, the title is uh, Ethiopian landmass under the influence of the East African Rift System. So how does actually the East African Rift System affect the Ethiopian landmass? Not only actually the Ethiopian landmass, the entire East African uh, landmass. So this is uh, our major uh, topic. And uh, when I come to uh, the content, Sorry. It's strange. It worked just before. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, oh okay. sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay. No, okay. No, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. <clears throat> so uh, these are the outlines. Uh, we do have a brief general introduction about Ethiopia. Maybe there might be some people uh, who do not know where Ethiopia and what Ethiopia is. And then the tectonic setting was a far depression. I think it is already written here. So directly to go to the general introduction. Uh, sorry. Uh, look, uh, Ethiopia is found at the eastern corner of Africa with a total population of about 125 million people and 86 ethnic groups, 1.1 uh, million kilometers square aerial coverage, 
and temperature is moderate, of course. Uh, Ethiopia is actually very suitable in uh, this uh, temperature condition, uh, ranging from five degrees Celsius to about 30 degrees Celsius, except the most remote area, Afar, our uh, today's major focus area, which is actually extremely hot. And rainfall, I think about 850 millimeter per year. This is actually one of the highest rainfall in uh, Africa as well. And ancient nation. Ethiopia is actually one of those ancient nation in, uh, nations in the globe with a 3,000 years recorded history. So to actually give you some highlight about uh, this, look, this is one of the oldest uh, standing structure in Sub-Saharan uh, Africa. This is what you call is the Yahat Temple, constructed uh, before 800 uh, BC, that means before Christ. So totally, uh, it spans actually, it stayed standing here for about uh, 2,800, 900 uh, years. And this has been actually constructed from the local practitic uh, material nearby, what you call them, the Adwa planks. You can actually see the external, exterior and internal uh, structures of the Yaha temple and even including the floor of the Yaha temple. It is very fascinating, still actually witnessing the past uh, developmental activities of our nation. And the second is those well-known uh, obelisks, which are found in Northern Ethiopia, typically Aksum. Uh, you can actually see here three major uh, obelisks. They are purely made of a single monolithic, uh, phonolithic rocks. So the largest obelisk is about 33 meters tall and 600 tons, really actually very heavy but unfortunately mm. now it fall down to the ground. And the two remaining standing obelisks, the mm -hmm. one is 24 meters uh, tall and about 160 meters, actually 160 uh, ton, and the other, the third one, 21 meters and about 120 uh, tons. And we do have also other uh, sculptures made from the same rock. And the other is uh, some representative, uh, one of the representative rock heaven churches, which is found in Lalibela, a rock heaven church carved from welded pyroclastic material. And it had actually a kind of three-story uh, church or three-story building with a height of about 12 uh, meters tall and built or carved in the late 12 to beginning of 13th century, almost. Uh, contemporaneous with uh, the European uh, development. Or... And now let's go to the geology of Ethiopia. What actually the geology of Ethiopia look like? Ethiopia has highly diversified geological uh, formations, starting from the younger volcanic rocks and quaternary sediments, which cover almost 56% of the entire uh, Ethiopian landmass and then followed by the Mesozoic sedimentary rocks that constitute about 26% of the total area coverage and basement rocks of actually mainly metamorphic and some basement, uh, some uh, intrusives, granitic intrusives. They cover about 18% of the Ethiopian land mass. When you come to the mineral resource, Ethiopia has very huge mineral resource, especially in gold and base metal. Gold is mainly traditionally or even uh, pro, uh, cultivated in artisanal manner. And Ethiopia actually nowadays produce about uh, 10 tons of gold from uh, the artisanal uh, mining and other base metals. And it has also very huge or even ample resource in industrial minerals, the so carbonates or the limestone the pure uh, silica sand or what you call is the beach sand and very widespread dimension stone sources as well as gemstones sapphire uh, opal are also found in various parts of the country and this is a, a general uh, stratigraphy of ethiopia basically northern ethiopia we do have the basement rock metavolcanics metasedimentus with uh, intrusive rocks and then highly diversified paleomesozoic sediments. Anyway, I don't want actually to spend on this. Simply, this is to give you a highlight about the geology of uh, Ethiopia. Now, when we come to major uh, today's major uh, topic, the continent uh, East Africa risk system. So what actually, how could we introduce or introduction to this continental risk system? 
the East African Reef System. Maybe this would be one of the largest, as well as most active continental reef system at present. Maybe you could not actually mention any other continental reef system as large as this one, as large as this, and even as active as the East African Reef System. So it spans from the north in uh, Syria and go through the Red Sea and splitting Ethiopia and Kenya into two and terminates in Mozambique. So it spans for over 6,000 kilometers. It is actually a very big continental rift uh, system. And it has been developed. It develops as a result of two major stress fields. I don't want actually to go into detail, but we do have a collision related uh, uh, rifting as well as a plume related rifting. So the East Africa Rift System formed as a result of the collision between Arabia and uh, Nubia, as you actually uh, Erosia, as you see here. And again, as a result of the emerging plume uh, coming from the deep mantle to the uh, lithosphere atmosphere boundary. Uh, so this is actually the image of, or even the sketch of the East Africa Rift System. But before we go to that, how uh, did it look like before actually the uh, plume or the rising of the plume and even the collision along the uh, Arabian and Erosian landmass? Africa actually looked like this, or Africa and Arabia were actually merged together. They were actually considered as one uh, continent, but simply separated by the Alpine type orogeny, what we call is the East African orogeny, or even sometimes it is so called the Arabian Nubian Shield. So uh, how could actually it split up? Maybe uh, if we go actually deep into the past, the African landmass looked like this. Actually, the Africa with its uh, children or with its micro uh, plates, it was actually merged, and this was actually called the Gondwana landmass. Of course, this had been actually occurred before uh, 250 to uh, 500 million uh, years ago. So this is actually to show you how continents rift up. It is not only actually Africa that has been split up. This is actually the current issue, but previously a lot of rifting and merging of uh, continents have been taken place. So now uh, let's go to the mantle dynamics. One of the most important uh, source that reshapes the surface of our crust. So the most driving force that reshape the surface of our crust is because of the mantle dynamics. So in the mantle, there are various activities. Uh, continental crust is subducted into the mantle, as we actually see in various uh, trenches. And again, deep plume material or deep mantle material is coming to the surface in the form of mantle plume. So you can actually see how the mantle plume uh, goes up. It originated at the core mantle boundary and moves up to the lithosphere asthenosphere boundary. And this is actually the main source for having uh, various types of magmatic activities, especially deep seated magmatic uh, activities. And fortunately, if we actually see now, I don't want actually to go into the uh, subduction related magmatism, but on those plume related magmatism. One, Active example is the Hawaiian hotspots or the Hawaii magmatic activities that took actually that has been taken place as the north central part of Pacific Ocean. And likewise, in the opposite pole, we do have also the Afar. So the Afar is also actually the magmatism in Afar is also uh, actually related with plume, deep uh, mantle related uh, tectonic process. Okay, so uh, how could actually the plume come to the surface? Really, while actually the plume is moving up, it reshape the entire morphology of Horn of Africa. To see actually from the early beginning, actually before uh, 30, 35 million years, when the plume is actually moving up, it pushes up the entire lithosphere to form a very belted surface on the Arabian and Nubian landmass. So the entire Arabian and uh, Nubian, especially Eastern Africa, had been uplifted by about 3,000 meters from the normal level of the African uh, landmass. So this is mainly because of the plume, because of this huge mantle material uh, coming to the surface. And then it erupts to actually the surface forming different types of fissural lava 
And then rifting started at about 18, uh, 16 million years. But this had been actually continually uh, taken place for the last 18 million. And the current uh, tectonic uh, mass, or even lithospheric uh, tectonic map look like this. So here is actually the Denakil depression. The crustal material is very uh, stretched and a lot of magmatic dikes and even uh, open fractures developed along the crust. And to see this actually in a more detailed uh, manner, more uh, schematic diagram, this is actually the uh, profile of the uh, Ethiopian land mass and even including the Afar depression, you can actually see the mantle plume dynamics activity. Now the mantle plume is greatly reduced because it had been actually erupted for the last 30, uh, 35 million years. Now uh, the plume head is now converted to the plume tail. We are actually at the last uh, stage of the plume uh, evolution in East Africa. And how about the Afar depression now? The Afar depression, it is a triangular shape depression that uh, covers a total area of 150,000 uh, kilometers square, very big area. And it is elevation drops from about 4,000 meters in the highlands to about 120 meters below sea level. So most part of the Denakil depression is now below sea level. So the maximum measured depth is 120 meters below sea level. So everything. If you uh, remove the evaporite deposit, which have been actually accumulated here, even it is actually much below uh, 1,000 meters. There are various types of uh, recent deposits, submarine volcanic deposits, as well as uh, carbonates and lacustre sediments are uh, collected and forming about a thickness of two kilometer or 2,000 meter, actually in the uh, depressed uh, land mass. And this is the across profile in the northern part of the Afar or Denakil depression. You can actually see the profile from about 3,000 and uh, at the axial zone below sea level. And again, if you go to the uh, Eastern block, what we call is the Denakil micro block, it is uh, still elevated. And along the rift, it looks like this. We do have a series of intermittently connected shield volcano, starting from the Dalul volcano, very small volcano, and then Gada Ale up to the famous volcano Arta Ale. And even it goes a bit south to the High Ali Gupi. So this is actually the along axis profile. Okay, now let's focus on three uh, parts of the Denakil Depression. Uh, the first one is on the northern part, the Dalol. Where is Dalol found? Dalol is found on the northern part of the Afar Depression or even the Denakil Depression in particular. And it is entirely below uh, sea level. It is completely covered by thick evaporite deposit. So uh, maybe look this one. This is a very important sub-aerial representation of an oceanic crust. Even if it is not covered now by water, it is below sea level, crust is very, uh, very thin. All of those geological processes resemble to that of the oceanic uh, crust. So that is why we call it the sub-aerial oceanic crust. So what are actually the major wonders of uh, Dalol? What makes actually Dalol so special when we compare with the other uh, geological uh, features in Ethiopia or even in the Afar Depression? Really, it is the hottest uh, area in the globe. Temperature sheds about 56 degrees Celsius, especially this season, uh, end of July and beginning of August, the maximum temperature. Now, nobody actually could reach there. Extremely hot, extremely uh, barren. And the other, it is also extremely hostile. A lot of uh, internal gaseous materials come out through those various hydrothermal uh, springs. So we do have hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide, huge carbon dioxide accumulation. So anyway, uh, in general, we call it Dalol is the most hostile environment in the region, even actually in the, uh, in the globe. And you are also working below sea level. So you can imagine even the pressure. Uh, pressure is also very high because you are actually at about 120, 130 below uh, sea level and it is confined. So really, again, the uh, pressure load is extremely high. But there are a lot of things to be seen, actually. Uh, you can uh, see a lot of things. 
especially the harmony of color. You can see various types of crusted, salt crusted uh, rocks with different color. And I will come to those main uh, variation for their color. So we do have a lot of hot springs, geysers, uh, and even crusted salt rocks. And the other, uh, Dalul is now becoming actually one of those uh, Mars analog environment in the globe. So far, we do have about seven Mars analog environment in our globe. Among them, uh, Dalul is one. I told you that uh, in Dalol, it is not the hot temperature. It is not actually the high pressure existing there. But there are also various uh, chemicals coming from the inner uh, mantle. And the hot springs are extremely acidic. They are actually approaching to zero. And also, I told you that sulfur, uh, uh, hydrogen sulfide is actually continually emitted. And even the hot springs, especially uh, we measure hot springs with temperature of 115 degrees Celsius. You can imagine water boils at 100 degrees uh, Celsius at atmospheric pressure, but here water boils at about 115 uh, degrees Celsius. So even the temperature is also very extremely uh, high for those hot springs. And now there is a search for life in this extreme uh, environment. So since the past 20 years, a lot of research activities have been conducted if life exists in this harsh environment. And of course, there is actually a trace of life found uh, in this salt crusted uh, materials. So in the form of what we call it morphological life. We could not actually get the live life, but simply their tracers are actually found imprinted within the salt rock. And the other, this, the current morphology, the current geological uh, processes uh, uh, taken place in Afar resembles to that of the Mars before actually uh, two to three million years, uh, billion years ago in Mars. So again, it is a good analog to study again about the uh, geological formation of the Mars. And it has also various advantages. And the other, we can actually simply uh, conclude that uh, both the beauty and danger go in harmony in Dalol. It is riskful at the same time interesting. Actually, scientists do not actually uh, quit because of all this, even hardship, they always actually flow to this area to study about the internal dynamics of the uh, mantle and even actually to see the complete evolution of rift. By the way, this is a very classical example to study a complete rift evolution from the initial cluster rupture up to the highly matured ocean basin. And even uh, before eight years, CNN actually put this area as one of the most 15 world uh, wonders or even most colorful landscapes in our globe. It was actually the first. You can actually go through this. Uh, there is actually a link here and you can uh, see. So really, uh, Dalol it is a must-see area. It is uh, even for scientific, you can actually uh, do very various kinds of scientific research and even in the form of tourist, it is also very uh, interesting. Here there is actually one link, if it works, you can actually see how maybe, do you see? Victor? No, doesn't work. Okay, so it's difficult uh, yeah, with the. So that, anyway. Uh, anyway, I will give you the link, uh, uh, no matter. There is actually a very interesting movie about the Dalon. What you have already seen, you would actually see also in movie. I will actually attach you the uh, movie. Now, let me actually pass to the other. Again, in Dalul, there is a very century-age traditional salt mining. So uh, the country was actually uh, producing its salt from this area. So there is no, of course, clearly defined time uh, frame when the traditional salt mine uh, started in this, but hopefully for the past uh, four or five uh, centuries. And 
it is also very interesting to see the entire process from the traditional salt mining, the processing, the transportation, and even actually the distribution. You can actually see all this. But now this tradition has been actually spoiled by the modernization. Uh, maybe we do have some uh, pictures uh, showing how they actually cut the salt crust, from, especially the upper part of the salt crust. This is actually considered as uh, mining phase. And then they process, they uh, reshape based on the desired size and weight. And finally, they, they load and transport this uh, salt by camel or camel caravan to um, a distance of 200, 300 kilometers from the Dalol area. But now this has been actually overtaken by lorries. Really, actually, it is uh, very sad to actually say that this tradition is now almost at the verge of collapse because uh, when there is uh, civilization, sometimes actually the problem is civilization distracts the traditional way of life of the Afarans or the Afar people. And the other is the other must see uh, area in the uh, Danakil depression is the volcano tectonic activities that have been taken place in Artale. So, here is Artali is located uh, in this, especially at the south central part of the Danakil uh, depression. And here you can actually see all those volcanic structures occur in our globe, especially in continental rift zones or even in ocean basins. We do have very nice shield volcanoes with very active hydrothermal uh, deposits, hydrothermal related deposits at the summit. And you can also see the slope of the shield volcano. And also various well-defined uh, volcanic structures. Here we call it geologically marsh uh, structures. Very uh, preserved and even, of course, they are also uh, very young. So some people say uh, there are a lot of things to go, uh, actually to see in Ethiopia. If you go to Ethiopia, you can actually see a lot of uh, things. But visiting the Earth Alley is a single reason to be there. If you go to Ethiopia and visit only Art Ali, that is enough. Because in Art Ali, everything actually you can see related to the tectonics and even magmatism of young ocean basin. You can actually see a lot of things. So that is why uh, you will not be actually... Uh, uh, so once you go to Art Ali, you go to uh, actually uh, and visit Art Ali, it is even more than enough because uh, it is not a one day uh, visit. You can actually spend even a week in this area. So multiple shield volcanoes exist there uh, with their uh, very fascinating landscape. And the other is the Art Ali active lava lake. This has been actually active since the past 120 years without any interruption. If you go to this site, you see site type of maybe a special uh, firework type uh, eruption in this, but sometimes it becomes actually full and overflow. And uh, dynamically changing again. The manner of eruption continually. What you actually see today would be actually completely different tomorrow. So uh, there is actually frequently changing eruption style in this area. And even uh, if you measure the temperature of the lava there at the surface, it is about 1,200 degrees Celsius, but sometimes it may go up to 1,400 degrees Celsius, especially if magma comes in huge amount. So depending upon the amount of uh, magma uh, size, temperature also uh, changes. And look here, this is actually a photograph captured uh, eight years ago. What it impressed uh, me is the architecture that would have been actually occurring in this lava lake. So I simply related with a simple plate tectonic model. You know, actually, we do have uh, mid-oceanic ridges and subduction zones and other tectonic features. If you actually see this uh, type of eruption in Artale, it exactly looks like the ring of fire, the Pacific ring of fire. I think I brought actually the tectonically active region in the Pacific uh, ring. So you can actually see. And this one, again, similar with the mid-oceanic ridge, or with the Atlantic mid-oceanic ridge type. So magma is actually coming through this uh, active zone and sub 
ducted along subduction. Immediately, you can actually see how the cooled magma again subduct to the magma uh, pool uh, down. So uh, really, actually, uh, this is also very uh, interesting uh, observing the lava lake. And the other various uh, young volcanic structures, this is actually uh, an eruption occurred at the end of November uh, last year, 2023. Uh, we were actually, we went there and uh, captured, even magma was actually flowing beneath uh, this crusted, uh, freshly crusted lava. You can actually see how actually uh, fresh lava looks like. And even uh, you can also collect both uh, crusted lava and even the magma. If you are actually, uh, if you are not actually dear to uh, 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 collect actually such type of uh, sample. And the other fascinating feature is the Dabaho uh, continental uh, rupture, which is found in the southern part of the Denakil Depression, just immediately here. So uh, this is actually a measure how seafloor spreading uh, takes place in young ocean basin. Most of the time, seafloor spreading took place with a rate of 5 to 18 centimeters uh, per, per year. But in this case, actually, sporadically, spreading rate is extremely very high. We could not actually measure even in centimeters. Sometimes we measure meters per year. And rupture of the floor up to 60 kilometers uh, long and even a width of about eight meters within a single day. You can actually see some of those uh, crustal rupture that has been uh, occurred in the past 15 years. This one, and you can actually see a lot of highly young uh, fractured areas. And even if we come to the 2005 Afar Diking episode, this would have been actually taken place within a few days, about eight, uh, eight meters uh, stretching or eight meter opening have been taken place within one or two days. And you can actually see this is uh, the maximum opening that would have been taken place. And the other, let me actually uh, take you in brief about the Afar anthropological site. Again, the Afar is interesting to host various types of fossils, especially those hominin fossils. You know, rift valleys, they are not actually only uh, magmatic sites. They are also very excellent uh, sites of sedimentation. Fast sedimentation actually took place in this. So as a result of this fast sedimentation, fossils are well preserved. And thanks to the French geologist, uh, Maurice Type, discovered the famous young sediment in uh, the area, what we call it the Hadar uh, formation in the 1960s, 1970s. And following this uh, young sedimentation, scientists actually fled there to hunt for fossil. And fortunately, they were la lucky. A team, uh, simply uh, or, uh, ruled or even coordinated by Donald Johnson have actually uh, discovered Lucy in the eight, actual beginning of 18, uh, 1980s or even in the 1974. So uh, the Afar Depression in general and Northern Afar Depression in particular is very important in terms of the geoheritage potential. And you all know that uh, Lucy Actually, this is uh, a bre actually uh, a cornerstone to actually study about the evolution of the human or the, even the hominid, hominin. And this has been actually aged to be 3.2 uh, million years. So uh, she was actually a bipedal uh, mammal and then actually walking with uh, two foot and even she was also a very excellent climber on trees. And the second is, I think, the Salam, discovered in 2000, actually, uh, 20 years later. And she is also part of the Australopithecus afarensis, or even actually uh, the hominin uh, typical uh, name. And of course, actually, most of uh, her bones were not actually uh, discovered, only some part of their bone. The skull, uh, the left part of their uh, skeleton actually uh, discovered by Professor Zerasanai Alan Zagad, a famous anthro Ethiopian anthropologist. And she was actually, they recognized that she was a three-year-old uh, baby. And previously, they were actually assuming that uh, Salam was the child of Lucy. But 
after intensive uh, dating, uh, Salam was not actually a baby of Lucy. Instead, actually, she was older by about 100,000 years old. Now, uh, maybe some uh, brief information on Ethiopia, or even most of the time, it is called Africa's water tower. Why Ethiopia is actually becoming Africa's water tower? This is also entirely associated with the tectonics, with the plume, with the uh, crustal uplift or lithospheric uplift as a result of the mantle uh, plume. So Ethiopia receives a high amount of rainfall, about 850 millimeter uh, per year over a vast uh, area. And because of this high precipitation, it also discharges high amount of water in the form of flood through those various uh, rivers. So it discharges about 45 to 50 billion meter cube every year to the neighboring countries and even beyond. You see, uh, almost 50% of the total water is actually flowing out of Ethiopia. There is no a single river flowing into Ethiopia. All streams actually flow from the Ethiopian highland to the neighboring country, starting from Eritrea, Sudan, South Sudan, Kenya, Somalia, and even to Djibouti. So nothing actually flows in to uh, Ethiopia. And this is actually the profile you can see, the Western Highland, Eastern Highland. And you can also see a very nice uh, waterfall emanate from the immediate Lake Tana. This is actually a special waterfall, it's actually uh, captured by many tourists in the region. And now let's actually rewind our presentation, the feature of the Ethiopian or African landmass. What would be actually the feature? There are many tectonic and uh, uh, volcanic uh, incidents took place in Afwa, and this all lead us that actually to reconstruct the past and even predict uh, the future. So uh, when we come to this, this is the current uh, tectonic map of uh, the African landmass. So the Red Sea Gulf of Eden and the Afar uh, depression. So uh, when we reconstruct using the principle of James Sutton, a famous uh, Scottish uh, geologist who found actually time, he said the present is the key to the past. Yes, he, uh, he was true. If we understand the present geological uh, phenomenon or activities, we can predict about uh, what, what happened in, uh, in the past. So from this, we reconstruct the uh, tectonic uh, map of the Horn of Africa. So before uh, 4 million years, the Africa, the Afro-Arabian land must look like this with a very narrow Red Sea and Gulf of Eden. And before 12 uh, million years, there was not actually Red Sea, but only uh, Gulf of Eden uh, commenced at that time. So uh, we can actually modify a bit this principle. The present is the key to the past. We can actually, we have to predict again for the future. So we uh, simply modify the famous principle, the present is the key to the past and the future as well. So by simply understanding the current uh, geological processes, we can predict the future. So we took your physical, magmatic and uh, tectonic structures. So in the near future, the upper land mass would actually look like this. So uh, the uh, denacle microplate would be actually split into two, and there would be direct connection between uh, the Red Sea, Gulf of Eden, and the Afar Depression. So this Afar Depression becomes actually at that time, maybe in the near future, Afar Ocean. So this is actually uh, local uh, interpretation about the future. When we are see in broad, this is the East Africa Rift. Uh, currently, uh, we have this uh, tectonic map. So crust is very thin about 14 kilometers, crustal stretching or spreading rate is sporadically very, very high. And again, it is extremely analogous with the Hawaiian hot spot, especially this Afar depression. So we can actually call it tectonic pole. So Afar depression is a tectonic pole, the other end of the tectonic pole of the Hawaii. So all its nature is closer to ocean than the continental rift. So. If these are actually the factors, what would happen actually? The future fate of uh, Ethiopia and the East African landmass. I think uh, this is actually the taking from this. We can say that 
uh, Africa or even East Africa uh, will have this type of tectonic map actually in the near future. So the birth of a new ocean and the splitting of Africa into two or even more plates is imminent in the near future. So this is our actually uh, last uh, concluding remark. And at last, please allow me to thank uh, few organizations and persons who actually make this presentation live and even my uh, visiting uh, uh, as well. So uh, my heartfelt thanks goes to the Austrian Academy of Science for fully sponsoring and supporting the visit program and creating actually this kind of uh, platform. I greatly appreciate the help of dear Victor Berkman for his again valuable discussion and review of the lecture uh, abstract and coordinating this program. Uh, really a great ap appreciation to uh, Victor Brookman. And also, I am also most grateful to my former supervisor and now a colleague, I just uh, Professor Christian Kobel for his tremendous uh, support and even all time encouragement, lifelong encouragement and showing me his limitless hard work. So this is actually the last and at last, thank you all uh, for attending this uh, presentation. And really, if you have questions and comments, you are welcome.